Fungus Jake here. I'm going to do a, a number of reviews out here in the shop back to back to back. So say hi to the, the black button up and blue undershirt. It's going to be familiar to you here over the next week or so. But I wanted to start out with a couple of blasters that I actually requested from m14gelblaster.com. Now, I actually asked to work with them. And I'm going, I'm going to get the backstory ahead of this review because it's important. Why would I ask to work with a random website? Well, I picked up my Unicorn Blaster from them. They were one of the first that had it available. And before I actually put my own money down to order that blaster, I asked a lot of questions. I wanted to see what it came with, what it, what model, because there were different variants of that Unicorn available right away. And they answered all the questions and they provided good follow-up service because there was a little hiccup on the tracking information and, and they were quite good about staying in touch with me back and forth. And I like service more so than just any individual product. That's a huge reason why I love Busby. The company behind the products is superior to other companies. Some of the products may be flops or they may be home runs. But if the company's good, you know you're backing something that you can endorse. So I felt like M416, M1, M1, let's see, M416, uh, they need to come up with a, a new name. But it's the, <laughs> the M416gelblaster.com. Yeah, they really, really got to work on that branding. But they, they provided good service when I was purchasing and before and after the purchase. So when the opportunity came up, I actually said, hey, would you be willing to send a couple of blasters to review? They checked out my channel and said, yeah, yeah, we'd be happy to. So they actually gave me the opportunity to request whatever blasters I wanted to see. And no, I didn't just go for the highest dollar ones that they had on their site and say, hey, I want that one and that one, like the new Diana. No. No. I picked some weirdos. Like this little thing. And then the, the Thompson shell ejecting one that I'm going to review next. Because... No, I'm not the biggest channel, but what people know me for is Busby, off-brand stuff, and the weird and unusual. And I like that. That's that's kind of... These are supposed to be fun things to use. Blasters are supposed to be fun. A lot of people lost sight of that. So I wanted to try some weirdo stuff. And, well, this is the 007 revolver. And it looks kind of weird at first. Especially when they show it in the listing, it has a like a muzzle attachment, has a scope on it, and it looks like a lot going on, but it has a price of only $29.99. So not astronomically priced. And it is a flywheel revolver. And it does have a true pop-out and removable cylinder. And it's a true six-shot revolver, as you would expect. And it takes standard half-length darts. I've done all my testing with Adventure Force half-lengths. So it's checking some boxes of it's not an odd dart type because this one is a flywheeler and I did have some hope to use it you know in actual nerf games if it didn't I didn't expect good performance out of it because they only claim 10 meters of firing range for those of us on freedom fractions it's 10 meters is 33 feet so we got only about 33 feet as a claimed range and of course remember claimed ranges are at an angle with max result, you know, if it typically shoots 25 feet, if one fires out to 33, they can claim it because it did. If 5% of them, Nerf used to put that in their packages, if 5% of darts reach that claim, that counts. That means if you fire 100 shots, if five darts sail out to that claim, then yay, they met their claim. Then that's how they all do it. So, didn't have high expectations of performance. It is a horizontal flywheel configuration, as you can see here. You, you can see the bulges in the shell that aligns with the motors and the flywheels. So, small little pistol with a in-grip battery compartment right here. And it comes, this is another, as soon as I've seen what kind of battery it has, you already need to temper your expectations. That's one of those little single cell 7.4 or no, 3.7. This is the 3.7 volt application, so keep in mind. It's not got a lot of juice to work from to begin with. And it comes with a USB charger. And yes, I am setting up for the chronograph results. 
but it has a simple, it's not ambidextrous because your cylinder pop-out is on the left-hand side of the shell. It has a switch right here, what would be in the hammer location. So it's actually not too bad. As far as on and off switches go, this one is pretty convenient because it's just on. And fire. <laughs> oh, had a miss there. Okay. And yeah, it does have a jam here or there. And it's like a 90% a rotation. Because you can easily just take your other finger and kind of flick. Now that is a definite flaw. But I found the thing to be mostly enjoyable. Performance on the chronograph is only 55 feet per second on average. At best. <laughs> I actually had some test sessions where it was averaging 49 and a half. So... Between 49 to 55 on my overall averages. So, not the highest performer. <laughs> Does have a rotation issue here or there, which I relate that mostly to the cylinder. The cylinder is pretty shaky on its mount. And the good thing about this being a uh, separate cylinder is this could be 3D printed. And that would be pretty easy. I'm already thinking of radioactive designs with Trip Miller there. He could probably... He could probably come up with the cylinder really fast. And overall, it's kind of a very inexpensive little blaster that it does have a Picatinny rail on top and underneath the barrel. So I think it could be made of something made out of it. As it is, it's not a home run. It really isn't. But it's kind of silly fun in a way. <laughs> but it, it's a $30 flywheel revolver. And there's not that many of those on the market. Now, comparing this one-to-one -to, -one to something like the Worker Hurricane who's, that's been out for years, this is actually right about in the same price range as the Worker Hurricane, give or take, you know, five, ten dollars. And the Hurricane, of course, vastly outperforms it. So if you were looking at a true performance standpoint, you wouldn't ever buy this over a Worker Hurricane. However, if the look is what you're going for and you're willing to tinker and mod it, I think you might have something there. Uh, Really, I think that's where somebody who sees this and says, hey, I love the look of that. That was who, that was me. I looked at it and I was like, hey, that looks cool. Looks, looks unusual. I want to give that a shot. And they were kind enough to send it my way. But as a actual, you know, hard verdict, no, this is not worth picking up over something like a hur worker hurricane. Because the hurricane is just by and beyond way better for basically the same price range so and that's also a six shot revolver even though it doesn't look like a revolver but comparing one to one it's a superior blaster but you may look at this and say hey i never would have considered that but that thing looks cool i want that and that's who this is really going to appeal to and it does have standard half length dark compat compatibility it's not one of those oddball sizes like the Thompson is that I'm about to review here in a few minutes. This thing, it's kind of a take it or leave it. You'll know by looking at it, keep in mind, it does have a couple of hiccups with the rotation here and there, and it does have pretty subpar performance at around about 49.5 to 55 feet per second on average. That's, But that does meet their, their 30 foot or so range claim. But that's the 007 revolver from m416gelblaster.com you'll, you'll know whether you want it or not. I'm just giving you the feedback. <laughs> this is Mongoose Sheik saying, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.